Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. As you know, left ventricular M mode gives us uh, a lot of good information. And by uh, correct measurement, uh, just uh, wall uh, thickness and LVID during the ostal systole, it can uh, give us a lot of uh, clinical information including wall thickness for hypertrophy, left ventricular volume, ejection fraction, and the synchrony. I explained in uh, two or three other lectures uh, for in detail about left ventricular M mode and you go to check it out. I am not going to talk about uh, this part. Left ventricular M mode has other uh, clinical implications that in lecture, in this lecture, I uh, am, uh, focus on them. Now let's go for it. Unlike uh, other walls, septum is between the uh, two uh, ventricles, right and left. And any uh, difference changes in the volume or pressure or timing of contraction on the left side and right side can affect the function and movement of the septum that we call it abnormal septal motion. And uh, in some uh, literature and some specialists and some condition, sometimes we call it paradoxical septal motion or septal bonds or shuddering that little by little I explain in all of them. The cause of the uh, abnormal septal motion can be divided to the two uh, groups. One is cardiac, another is pulmonary. In cardiac, at top of them is uh, CAD, coronary artery disease that can uh, cause wall motion abnormality. Uh, another one is left bundle branch block. Uh, open heart surgery, mitral stenosis, constrictive pericarditis, and finally, agenesis of the pericardium. And pulmonary can be due to pressure or volume overload of the right ventricle. In some condition, uh, 2D is easy. We can detect uh, those uh, as abnormal septal motion, like that uh, in the pulmonary hypertension severe type. We can see D shape very easy on the 2D or wall motion abnormality due to coronary artery disease. We can see akinesia or dyskinesia very easy. But in other situation, uh, 2D is not very accurate and sensitive because those uh, changes in pressure and volume, uh, volume in both sides uh, affect only in fraction of the second in cardiac cycle and 2D, uh, our, our eyes is not sensitive that, that in, uh, we can detect in those uh, changes in short of the time. So for that uh, purpose, uh, we, we use it, uh, one of the most uh, important and useful uh, modality is uh, M modes, and another is speckle tracking that I am focusing on this lecture more on the left ventricle M mode and detecting those uh, condition and situation. Now let's go check each of them one by one. M mode is a good modality for detecting cardiac timing events. And as uh, if we add on uh, color to the M mode uh, that we called it color M mode, it improved the sensitivity and the accuracy of our uh, measurement and study, but it's not mandatory or big deal. But if you have it in your machine using color M mode for left ventricle, it will be very helpful. As you know, color uh, M mode create an image from a specific line that correspond with the cursor. And uh, it finally, it create at every moment, they connected each other and finally create a 2D image that you can see on this one, the sh short axis or horizontal axis belong to the time and vertical axis uh, represent distance. And each spot 
belong to the correspond exactly with cursor as you can see here we have free wall skin and subcutaneous uh, free wall right ventricle right ventricle chamber septum left ventricle and posterior wall finally pericardial fat pad and pericardium now let's see what is the normal uh, pattern of the left ventricle m mode in normal situation the m mode of left ventricle will be like this and has this uh, characteristic pattern first we have probe at the top as you can see here then we have skin and subcutaneous tissue then we have right ventricle free wall then right ventricle then septum then left ventricle cavity posterior wall and finally pericardium during uh, systolic the septum start contraction and thickening as you can see here and move toward the left ventricle or away of the transducer or probe as you can see here and if you make attention the peak of the posterior wall is a little delay compared to the peak of the septum and that is the reason electroconductivity uh, first uh, septum uh, depolarized and then uh, posterior wall so we have a little gap and we by this uh, how much uh, the differences to the peak we can measure how much the synchrony is between the septum and posterior wall that i talk in the, the synchrony lecture in detail at the end of the t at the top of the t the thickness of the septum become maximum and depolarization start the septum start going back as you can see here but at the same time right at the end of the t close to the right of the end of the t the tricuspid valve open and blood goes to the right ventricle and passively it push the septum toward the uh, left ventricle again and it create a notch at this level as you can see we called it a shudder or notch at the septum and if you put more attention you can see the thickness at the maximum and at this level almost is the same it's just only passively this uh, second part that goes uh, toward the left ventricle is because of the uh, blood goes to the right ventricle a little sooner than the left ventricle if in the fraction of the second so we have some notch here this is a normal pattern of the septum on the m mode and after but with, with the starting diastole after t uh, little by little the septum become flat and move a little up or toward the probe or toward the right ventricle and up to the end of the diastole just slope a little up as you can see here slope up and here slope down those two patterns in the pathology situation change that i'm not going to talk about that uh, in this lecture just those related to the, uh, our topics now let's see what is the pattern of the septum uh, in the those pathologic uh, uh, issues and uh, in the abnormal septal motion how it looks like 